Hey everyone, my name is Aditya and the reason I'm putting out this video is there was a small hackathon um, part of my university, um, GW, the university that I'm uh, studying in has a, um, you know, a local student chapter of ACM, the Association of Computing Machinery, which is a national organization, but you know, in a much smaller scale, this organization exists as a chapter here in GW and they hosted a hackathon, which I was a part of. And I created a you know simple product that um, you know was done during the time frame of that hackathon around 24 hours, and it's something that I worked on. I was thinking about it for a while, and I just thought good to document this, put it outside, and uh, see if I can get some feedback from other people. Maybe um, so this might serve as inspiration for other projects other people want to create. And all the work that I've done, it's open. It's on GitHub. Your uh, welcome to look at it and it's a self-reflection for myself so uh without further ado let me continue um, um show a demo of what i've built explain what i've done and i'll give you the resources to what i've done in the uh, description of this video so getting started what i've done is i have tried to build um, um in, in its most simplest form it's a uh, um, you know a remote code execution environment so you write code and instead of running it on your system you can send the code to our server we execute it on our end and then we send back the result to you now when you do this there are certain complexities involved but first you would want to know why why, why is this required in the first place so one is um, a lot of times when you want to do this sort of thing uh, each person has a totally different environment on their um, computer and it's very hard to replicate it so one person might be having um, a macbook one person might be having a dell laptop different hardware the operating system is definitely different even if your operating system is the same the version might be different the tools the software that you're installing there is just so many levels um, of differences that could cause problems so when you run into an issue and you're trying to get help um, helping people isn't always that easy and straightforward because there are so many differences. So allowing people to work and develop write code on the same consistent environment makes the job much more simple. Now this isn't exactly new. A lot of people do this. Um, if you have um, heard about, I think GitHub has something called Code Spaces where you can create this online, um, you know, um, um, development environment and you can replicated everyone on your team can work on it so that's not physically on your computer it's there remotely on another server and then you can work on that environment so people have done it much more efficiently but this is just something as a project i thought it would be cool if i can try and get some aspects of this down and uh, working and the other thing is um since you know i'm studying computer science over here uh, i'm taking an intro cs class over here and they have quizzes tests that sort of things where we have problems and then we had to write code or logic pseudocode to um, solve those problems sometimes it's just java code so they give you a problem a task and we need to write code in order to solve it and because um, of you know various reasons the ways in which these quizzes or tests are conducted are not ideal a lot of times we just do it on paper now the reason for this is different they uh, officially quote it's to uh, you know help prevent cheating and stuff but apart from that i just feel a better solution is possible so that's how the inspiration for this project came so i wanted to create um, an online plat platform or app whatever you want to call it where educational institutions can set up and administer these quizzes or tests so as you can see on the left side they can load up the instructions on the right side you have a code editor they can choose which language they want um, uh, to all the students to code in and then they can load in a couple of test cases that the students can choose from uh, i mean the students can see and then there's a place to view your output so students can write the code they can compile and run see the output over here and then they can choose to run against the test cases to see if they pass or fail and then once they're done they can submit the code the teachers or the instructors can view it they can grade it automatically there will be an auto grader and then if they want to run it against some hidden test cases that can be done too so this isn't again this is nothing new um, if you've used 
tools like uh, lead code or any other online um, uh, you know website where they have these coding problems and then they allow you to solve them run against test cases people have done this before but i thought it would be a cool project to try and attempt some of this myself so i'll show you the demo what i've what i have done um, as you can see instructions don't work test cases don't work it's just a mock-up of you know how it would look it's just a ui that i've done that will interact with my backend so that we can see the output so um i'll write some code over here this is obviously wrong this does not make any sense i'm going to hit compile and run it's going to say invalid code could not detect the class name please provide form properly formatted code so one thing you'll let you know is the this needs to be set up for different uh, programming languages so we can support everything uh, currently i've only got this ready to work with java but this can be extended so let's say you want to allow students code to py you know, code in python that can be supported different versions can be supported so for right now it's only java so since it's java i'm going to write some valid java code i'm going to say public class let's call this demo and then i'm going to have a main public static void main the usual boilerplate right and then i'm going to print to the um, um to the console system dot out dot print line say hello and then i'm going to compile and run it's going to process and then it see uh, as you see over here it says semicolon expected so I made a mistake i forgot the semicolon i'm going to add that again and try running it and now i can see my output and i mean most valid java code will work so i can add a for loop let's say int i equals zero i less than five i plus plus and then i'm going to output those numbers so it's going to output zero to four right and then let's hit compile and run then we can see hello followed by our five numbers and the if you remember i talked about a lot of complexities involved so one is you know a lot of people are going to be using this simultaneously if something were to go wrong it shouldn't affect the experience for other people the server can't just go down it can't crash because other people are actively using the system uh, maybe a test is being administ administered so um, it needs to be available at all times the other thing is people can uh, misuse this they can try to add malicious code and exploit the server so we need to protect against that and you know you can just write code that is very resource intensive that runs for a very long period of time and that just can't execute on the back end so i need to account for all of this and for that i have come up with a couple of solutions the way i've done this is um it's a node.js web server very simple stuff it's basically a prototype um, um that i built in less than 24 hours so it's a node.js server um you make that api call with your code and the language of your choice and then on our back end we do our basic validation and then what we do is we spin up a docker container we run the docker container and execute and that executes a bash script which compiles and runs the um, java code that you provided and because it's this docker container it's its own isolated environment so you can't really do any real damage apart from the fact that your code may be really resource intensive there's really nothing much you can do so it runs in that isolated environment and let's say your code takes too long to run we have a timer it could be two seconds five seconds ten seconds whatever it is and there are a lot of ways to uh, enforce this you can add a time uh, limit so it can be like 10 seconds you can add um, a memory limit to the dock container so it's only allowed to cons uh, allowed to consume so much memory that way if someone writes some really re uh, resource intensive code it's not going to slow down everyone else uh, using the system so there are a lot of ways you can control this so for now it's just a timeout that i've implemented so what i'll do is um, let me just add a while loop i'll say while true which means it's always going to be true and then i'm going to try and output something just to simulate what happened right so if i hit compile and run it's going to take forever it's going to compile but when it's going to run it's going to take for you know just going to keep running on and on it's never going to quit so that's where the timer that i implemented comes in so when it hits a timeout 
it kills the process it kills the container and then it returns back your error saying it ran for too long that usually means that you have done something wrong because that's not the expected use case of this kind of environment you don't want to be writing code that runs on for ever and ever you want to um, run it for a particular task and then it needs to give your output and quit so it usually means that you have made some error and this gives you a good indication um, to go go and fix the code so um, that's about it of what I've done. This is the UI that interacts with my Node.js uh, web server that I've created. And as I said, there are a lot of ways to expand this and I'm going to link to the GitHub, um, you know, links in the description. And yeah, I mean, if you have any feedback, if you think it's cool, whatever it is, you can let me know in the comments. The main reason I'm making this video is to document the process and uh, it helps me to reflect on the process and um, if this served as some sort of inspiration for other people, um, um, you know, it's, it's helpful. And if anyone wants to know how I actually implemented this, maybe do a code walkthrough, I'm glad to do it. The GitHub's there uh, in the description, but apart from that, if you want me to walk me through the, uh, um, you know, walk through the process of how I implemented this, um, uh, please feel free to let me know. So that's about it. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.